course, I had a, a pretty girlfriend, and now I got a pad so she can hang out and spend, you know, stay long stay and, the night, the weekend, and get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. How did you feel when she came to you and told you, I'm pregnant? Well, see, here's the difference. At that point in time, I wanted a baby because I didn't have nobody. Mm. I'm, a, I'm by myself. I don't have, I'm not dealing with any relatives. So I was kind of like the one that was like, cool. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to Ehe, the reason you see me. I left, I, I left, I left the, on my aunt uh, to live with my aunt. Yeah. I mean, uh, and after, after that, mm -hmm. after that, I've been on my own ever since. Uh, mm -hmm. At 18, I, I moved out. I had a. What's your first job you had? When yeah. I moved out, when I moved out, I got two hundred fifty dollars Social Security uh, from my father. From your father. So I had a hundred dollar month apartment. Mm -hmm. I spent a hundred dollars on food and I had fifty dollars in my pocket. And um, I really, I was going to trade technical college. I was trying to be an auto body and fender. I wanted to be cars. Mm. I did that in high school. I know how to paint cars. I know how to work on cars. But I was always intrigued with the cats that was pulling up in the cars. Mm -hmm. I wanted the car. I didn't want to just work on the car. Mm -hmm. So. My first real job was in the military. Mm. I um, I was. Um, How old were you when you went? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Because what happened was, being a being a by myself at eighteen, I had my own pad. I got my girl. Pregnant. I was about to say, I know you had your daughter when you went. Yeah. So I had my 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 my, my girl. Now I got a girl can stay over the house and hang mm -hmm. out and all that. And I got her pregnant. I didn't really know you could get somebody <laughs> pregnant that quick because I hadn't had that much sex. I wasn't really fast mm. in high school. You know? They didn't teach us in high school back then. But you ain't get, I'm not, you're not knocking it down yet. You know, <laughs> like the girls in my school would flirt with you. And then at night when at school was over, they getting picked up by grown ass niggas. Mm, and and nice cars. And shit. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why are you even talking to me in school when you got these grown ass men picking you up at high after school? So I was right. like, so I really wasn't mm -hmm. able to really get no serious action until I was a 12th grader. Mm, right. You know, a lot, of, a lot of my homies was getting pussy in hot junior high and, and that wasn't me i was i wasn't popular yet you know <laughs> <to> be honest. <laughs> so when i finally could get this constant flow of action i had to be in a 12th grade because that's when i had a little leverage uh -huh. over the females mm -hmm. so of course i had a, a pretty girlfriend and now i got a pad so she can hang out and spend you know stay long stay and, the night the weekend and get and pregnant <laughs> <laughs> Basically, how did you feel when she came to you and told you I'm pregnant? Well, see, here's the difference. At that point in time, I wanted a baby because I didn't have nobody. Mm. I'm a, I'm by myself. I don't have. I'm not dealing with any relatives. So I was kind of like the one that was like, cool. Yeah, you know, I got somebody. But she was young. She was in the tenth grade. Mm. So. You know, that was a trip, but that's when I, I joined the Army. I did four years in the military, and, uh, yeah, that was my first job. Did you have to sit down with the parents? But <laughs> no, it really wasn't. It, was, it wasn't that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. It was kind of like, you know, we was kids, and we was having sex, and that's just yeah. how it happened, mm -hmm. you know. But it wasn't like, I mean, after I came out the Army, me and her were able to make us some uh, understanding that we was just fucking Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're too young. We're not a couple, you know, so we were able to co-parent the baby and take care of my daughter. You know, well, see, once I once I came out the military, I got in the streets. Prior to the military, I was in the streets doing little petty things, you know, but I knew that wasn't going to make no money and I was going to go to jail. And now that I got this daughter. I need to be responsible. So that's why I enlisted. How long did you stay in the military? Four years. Four years? You didn't want to re-enlist? No, I did like I did like two years. I call it two years in, two years out, where mm -hmm. I was two years kind of like gung-ho. But then there was a moment in the military where one of my sergeants told me that you're in here because you can't make it in civilian life. Mm. And I was like, that struck me. I was like, mm. this, well, that's why I did join, you know, but... I can make it, you mm. know. Sometimes, you know, we tell people positive stuff, but sometimes you got to tell somebody they're a loser to really activate them. Right. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> some, people, some people that work on it, some people that don't. Some people will go into total depression. That's why you have so many people talk about mental illness now, and they say that um, you scarred me because you told me I was a loser and da, 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 whatever. And some people take it and be like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Exactly. So that wow. scar hit, hurt me a different way. It was mm -hmm. like, yo, it man. It motivated you. But now I come out the army and all my little homies that was, you know, 18, 17, 16. Mm -hmm. I come home and they have elevated their game. Mm -hmm. Now they like, oh no, we not doing that no more. We ain't stealing car stereos. If we steal anything, we steal the whole car. And then what <laughs> we doing is we hitting these jewelry stores, these credit unions, these small banks. We getting money. Word, like that's how it's happening. Mm -hmm. Now I now I come back. I'm infantry, so I got military understanding. So I start figuring out how to plan out these things better for them. And we got real active doing that and um i was fortunate i never got caught mm. i never got caught and we did that for about five years solid and wow. during this time that you were doing this you weren't even um interested in music at that time well see music happened during the time i was in the military uh when i was in the military you're in there with people from all over the country mm -hmm. and new york kids would win the military. I was stationed in Hawaii. I was 25th Infantry Division. So there was cats from New York coming that were there in my unit. And they had tapes. And they playing hip-hop. This is first generation of hip-hop is unrecorded hip-hop, meaning just tapes. Right. That's the Fearless 4, and the, I mean, Treacherous 3. Herc. All, cool cool Herc. Herc. all that kind of stuff. Then when Sugar Hill Gang hit, it broke. It started to be recorded on wax. But pre- it was all on the tapes in the parks. I was hearing those. So I'm really, it's very, I'm listening. I'm like, that shit sound dope. That shit sound dope. And then they could break dance a little bit. These are military cats. I'm like, I like this shit. Hip hop is very intoxicating. When you see it, when you see the DJing and the graffiti, you like it. Like, it, it makes you like it. I'm like, I want to try what did, you, what did you think about Curtis Blow when that was going on? Dope. <laughs> it was dope. Curtis Blow, I mean, Sugar Hill Gang, yeah. King Tim the yeah. Third, Fat Bad Bad. Anything rapping was cool to me. I was like, this is dope. So my plan to come out the military was to be a DJ. Mm. So I bought a bunch of stereo equipment in the Army, and I, I you know, EV speakers, and I'm going to throw parties. In L.A., you had Uncle Jam's Army. Uh... And they were throwing these big parties in L.A. that were at the L.A. Sports Arena. This is like the big introduction of a rave. 5,000 kids at a dance. Because there's a big market between, you know, 16 and 21. Mm -hmm. They can't get into a club. Right. So these parties were jumping. And L.A. was active. So I thought I could do that. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, the reason you see me.